And if I have to preach without a microphone, I'm going to preach without a microphone. It's time. It's time for the word of God. We good. Microphone check. Okay. Yeah. I, I truly believe that this for somebody today. <laughs> the devil wouldn't work that hard to keep a spirit of confusion. One, two, one, two. And microphone it's, check. It's still sure there. Good in real time. Microphone check. Okay. So if we have yeah. to, I, I truly believe. If we have to, somebody today. Yo, let's just let, let's, <laughs> let's cut it off. The devil wouldn't work. And one of the principles that will continue to be the driving force that leads me into new levels of maturity. This principle this don't just don't right lead me into new levels of maturity. It leads me into new levels of emotional security. All right, all right, all right. This principle leads me into new levels of mental maturity, personal maturity, financial maturity, and spiritual maturity. Because without maturity, we will remain in immaturity and in some forms in insecurity. Did y'all hear what I just said? Yeah. Without maturity. The reason why we are called transforming intentional nonstop growth is because it's an assignment from heaven to earth for us all to step into a level of maturity continually. We just don't mature on the weekends. We just don't share, we just don't mature in certain seasons. We just don't mature just when we have a heartbreak. The word of God is calling us to mature continually. Because if I don't mature continually, then I'm going to be in immaturity or in insecurity. And when I get trapped in immaturity and in insecurity, then the devil does not have to fight me from the outside. Because he knows that my identity has been altered on the inside. Why does he have to bring something from the outside of you when everything on the inside of you is in turmoil? He don't have to fight me on the outside when he knows that I am in turmoil. Right, let's switch this. Hey. When he knows I'm in turmoil on the inside. Oh, okay. But the principle that helped me and the principle that continues to help me is this. You may need to write this down. God is not a respecter of persons. But God is a respecter of principles. I think if you don't get nothing else out of this entire day, if you study this out, this alone can change every dimension of your life. God is not a respecter of persons, Leadry. He's a respecter of principles. So this means, Caleb, because I'm a preacher, that don't necessarily mean that God going to answer my prayers before he answers yours. Now, make any sense? This, it don't mean that because God going to have more favor on you than he has on me because you may have more money than me. It doesn't mean that God going to have more favor on you than he have on them because you got more education than them. It doesn't mean that God going to have more favor on them than he have on you because you got more influence on them. Are you with me? May I submit to you in the kingdom of God, God doesn't favor the person. God favors the principle. So the wind of God is not necessarily on me. It's on me if I'm in what he's saying. So in other words, God is no respecter of persons, but he is a respecter of principles. This is true even in salvation. What you just read, he don't respect the person. Let's go. Let's, let's go. Put it back up. Romans 10 and 8. Let's go. What saith it the word? It is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. The word. The word. I accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. Yeah. It's, in, it's near me. It's in my mouth and it goes in my heart. That's the word of faith in which we preach. Verse 9. If condition. Y'all see? Y'all see it? Y'all see it? The biggest word in the Bible. 
if. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you confess out of your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus died raised from the grave, that's the principle. That's the principle. That's what God respects. Not the Jew or the Gentile, the black or the white. The word, the, he respects the principle of if you confess out of your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died, raised from the grave, then you are saved. Because watch this. The principle gets, verse 10 says this, for with the heart once believed. So this is what he's look, This is what he's after. He's after the principle getting in our heart. If the principle get in my heart, it will move me to action. I don't do something because I hear something in my head. I only move on whatever I move in because it's in my heart. Am I making any sense? So I'm following God not because I say I'm following God in my head. I'm following God because something is happening in my heart. I can tell what's in your heart when I pay attention to what you're following. I can tell if, if money is the pursuit of everything in your life because all I got to do is just look at your lifestyle. I can tell if a relationship is the pursuit. I can tell whatever is the pursuit because what's in your heart is going to come out of your life. Am I making any sense? Am I making any sense? So, so this means that God is not a respect of persons. But God is a respecter of principles. Uh, this, this, the Lord hit me one day when I was first starting my new life. The Lord hit me one day because one day me and the family was at the house. We was at grandma's house and it was about 20 of us just sitting on the porch because at this point, everybody know that Big Mom would keep the family together. Right. So all the family, when Big Mom was at the house or wherever, everybody come to Big Mama's house because everybody want to be at Big Mama's house. And so therefore, it's about 20 of us and we all on Grandma's front porch. And as we on Grandma's front porch, everybody just kicking it. And I'm trying to get my new life started. Watch this. God got one plan and I got another one. Mm. Right. Meaning what God is trying to do is get me prepared for the ultimate. But I'm wrestling with God, trying to get God on the, uh, I'm wrestling with God because I'm trying to get financially, financially secure immediately. Sometimes, sometimes you will wrestle with God when God wants the ultimate, but you become a slave to the immediate. God wants the ultimate character, but I want the immediate financial blessing today. And so what God will do, Nadia, is this. He will let you fight against him, fight against him, fight against him, fight against him. Then he will speak to you and see will you become a slave to the ultimate or will you stay fighting about the immediate? That's so good. That's so good. Never forget this, Keisha. Never, you don't even know this. Watch this. We all sitting on the porch. We all cooling. Everybody talking, all my aunties, everybody there, and we just having a good time. But on the inside, I'm struggling. Watch this. And then Keisha and her entire family come around the corner. And when they come around the corner, they come and they, they get out the car and she walk with her family and she walks with her family onto the, to the porch. And when I saw them, may I submit to you, I saw stability. I saw strength. I saw prosperity. I saw it. Watch this, and when I saw it, I started saying to myself, my God, we the same age. Um, we come from the same place. But watch this. And I'm going back and forth in my mind. I know you don't understand, but don't worry about it. We good. He, he was working with me, not with you. Watch this. God was giving me a picture of something because he didn't want me to. He didn't want me to get caught up in my depression. He was getting ready to amplify me by showing me a principle. So as they get out of the car and they walk up, everybody's just talking. We just kicking it, right? For the first time as I'm looking around, I don't have nobody to get exposed to around my family that God wants me to push after. Because you do know when God wants to bring you out, he exposes you. He shows you something in front of you to get you an appetite. And what you look like when Caleb was nothing about three years old. What you look like was stability. What you look like was the next level. What you look like, and I was going back and forth within myself about when it's going to be my time, when it's going to happen here. And I heard the Lord as clear as day say this. He say, son, don't forget. 
I am not a respecter of persons, but I am a respecter of principles. I'm a respecter of principles. Watch this. Where you start shouldn't limit who you become. I was starting all over again. And sometimes we begin to think when we see other people that God is showing us other people for us to get frustrated in. God was showing me where you start should not limit where you become. It does not matter where you start. It's all about the principles that you are following so you become. Lord said, right? So it's not about where I start. It's about who I want to become. So this means that he's not showing me the stability on them for me to get in depression. He's showing me the stability on them for me to start finding principles. Because then he went into, if you just do, if you make the sacrifices that they made, you can get to the place you want to be. So the Lord began to let me see that he's not a respecter of persons. Stop looking at people around you that's at the next level and stop saying, if I had this, I would have that. If I was here, I would do this. If I was this, I would do that. No, 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 no. Help you. Let me help you. He's not. Calm down. He's not a respecter of persons. People are respecter of persons. I'm making sense. In the business world, you can't get certain connects if you ain't connected to the right person. Right, 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 so right, this right, means right. that he's, but that the people are respecter of people. Right. Yeah, yeah. But in the kingdom of God, yes, the kingdom he's of not a respecter of persons. He is a respecter of principles. May I submit to you, Toya, when the Lord spoke that to me, I knew this. I don't have a whole lot, but I got one principle that I know without a shadow of a doubt. That it's been working for me for the last, calm down, boy, calm down. I got one principle. See, because you can't preach this type of message, you literally got to teach this. Because I don't need my alto to override your info. Because there is an impartation that's about to come. May I submit to you the one principle that will move heaven, if don't know other principle move heaven, is the principle of faith. The principle of faith will move heaven when nothing will remove heaven. Take that off. I ain't ready yet. I'm not ready. Take that off. Watch this. What is faith, Pastor James? Here it comes. Let's go with this. Mark 11, 22. Let's go here. Faith is a neutral and supernatural power that will work however you decide to work it. Faith is a neutral and supernatural power, meaning it's neutral and faith will work for you or faith will work against you. However you use your faith, that's how faith will be using and working for you. In other words, what you do with your faith, it will dictate and determine what your faith. Let's go to Mark 11 and 22. Let's go to Mark 11 and 22. Let's go to Mark 11 and 22. Show this to me. At this point, Jesus has went down. He's seen a fig tree. He saw that the fig tree was supposed to be producing fruit in his season, but it wasn't producing fruit. So you know what Jesus did? He cursed the fig tree. He looked at the fig tree and he said, in the time when you're not supposed to be producing, now you're not, you're in the time you're supposed to be producing, you're not producing. So anything that don't produce in this season, I got to get rid of it. I curses it. In other words, maybe, let me, let me not go there. Let me go. Let me, maybe. So, so, so Jesus, so Jesus answered to them and he said this. When they walked by the fig tree and said, man, he cursed that fig tree that we saw yesterday and it's withered at the roots. They was going crazy. And Jesus said, calm down. Have faith in God. Remember now, faith is a neutral and supernatural power that will work however you decide to work it. Watch this. For assuredly, I say to you, whosoever. 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 Black people, white people, Mexican people, Arabian people, African people, whosoever. Neutral. 
Did you catch it? Oh, I am. Slow down. Don't push me. Just, just neutral. Thank you, Mom. Thank you. Neutral. Whosoever. This means anybody. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Miss Valerie, what mountain is in front of you that you are not talking to? Is it bitterness? Is it shame? Is it fear? Is it toxicity? Whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Now this mountain is physical, but he's talking about spiritual mountains. He's talking about personal mountains. He's talking about financial mountains. He's talking about, he's talking about emotional mountains. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. Here it comes. And does not doubt. Where? In his heart. Well, when I believed in my heart, the Holy Spirit of God comes into me, regenerates me, and makes me a new creation. So it's now it's making me all the sense in the world. I have to believe in my heart to get into the kingdom. I believe in my heart to cast out the mountain. Faith is a neutral and supernatural power that will work when I position my heart in a specific place for it to work. Can, can I help y'all? Can I help you? Can I help you? You know what the enemy has been doing? Teaching us how to position our heart in brokenness. The gateways to the heart are my eyes, my ears, my mouth. So whatever I position my heart at and I feed it the longest, that's what becomes the strongest. So if I'm in brokenness, this means not only have I experienced brokenness one time, but I position my heart in a broken place. And may I submit to you, I've been continually feeding myself brokenness. Now I have faith in brokenness. That's good. That's good. If I got faith in brokenness, watch this. I'm positioning myself for the brokenness to work against me. I can be praying to God, bring me an anointing to get out of this brokenness. But God is saying, you are violating the principle. I am not a respecter of persons. I'm a respecter of principles. You are feeding yourself broken principles. And since you are feeding yourself this, you are believing this, Jesus says you will have whatsoever you He said, but believes that those things which he says will be done, he will have. Okay. So what I keep saying is what I keep seeing. Starting to make sense. Proverbs 18 and 31. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So if I want freedom, I got to position my heart and my mouth into the place of freedom. And all that can come out of my mouth is freedom. Because why? I'm positioning my heart and my mouth. And watch this. Here comes another principle. As long as the earth remains, there will always be seed time and harvest. May I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that faith is not faith. It's not just a neutral and supernatural power that will work however you decide to work it. Can I tell you what else, what else faith is? Faith is a fruit and faith is a gift. What's the difference, Pastor James? When faith is a gift, God gives gifts instantly. But when faith is a fruit, it happens progressively. May I submit to you that if I had a seed, an apple seed in my hand right now, and I told you that, watch this, there is a tree in your hand. Put the seed right here. There is a tree in your hand. Watch this. In order to get the tree, I got to do some stuff. I got to take the seed. I got to go to the right place. I got to go to the right ground, the right soil. 
I got to dig up the soil. I got to make sure that the soil is fruitful. I got to take the seed, put it in the soil. I got to water the seed. I got to nurture the seed. I got to make sure sunlight go on the seed. I got to make sure it's protected. Because what's happening is, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, the principle of the seed is, if it don't die, it cannot produce new life. Jesus says in John 12, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, come on y'all, it cannot bear fruit. So what God is doing is, he's trying to take our lives, put it in the right soil, make sure that you get water, make sure you get the nutrients, make sure you get everything you need so that it can produce fruit. You know what our problem is? We want the gift, but we don't want the fruit. Give me the gift of faith so I can get the healing now. Give me the gift of faith so I can get the blessing now. Give me the gift of faith so I can get the fruit now. When God, God ain't like people. People want to run up the mountain and they want to get up on the mountain today. But watch this, what happens when you come up here and get up here today, but you don't have the wisdom, you don't have the revelation, you don't have the strength, here it comes, and you don't have the character to be able to handle this hot life when it comes to you. So watch this, you want the, you want the gift to hurry up and put you in a position that is gonna fill the void of attention. We want a gift of faith to put us in a position because there is a void that God is trying to fill, not instantly. He fills the void progressively. Why? Because God, because faith is not just a gift. Faith is a fruit. The fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, faithfulness. In other words, faith is tested so it can show its fruitfulness. If God gives me faith immediately, and then I get in a position that I should have been growing to progressively, when the storms of life begin to rage, I'm going to think that God has put me to shame. And God hadn't put me to shame. There are some prayers that God has to say no to. He has to say no to them. Because why? You may have the big ability to believe God. But you don't have the character to sustain what God is trying to do when he moves you. I'm making sense. So watch this. Sometimes Jesus says in Matthew 9 and 29. According to your faith. Be it done unto you. But sometimes he says, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as we. But I pray for you. And my prayer is that your faith fail you not. 2 Corinthians 4 and 13 says, We have in the same spirit of faith. Therefore we believe and therefore we speak. Romans 1 and 17 says that the righteousness of God has been revealed from faith to faith as it is written. The just shall live by faith. May I submit to you, Romans 10 and 17 says, that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 12 and 3 says God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So what I do in my faith, it will dictate and determine what my faith will do for me. 1 John 5 and 4 says, this is the victory that overcometh the world, even my faith. 1 Timothy 6 and 12 says, fight the good fight of faith and lay hold to eternal life. My God, Hebrews 11 and 1 says, now faith is the substance of these hopeful, the evidence of things not seen. 
Bind the elders. Obtain the good report. By faith we understand that the laws were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen did not come from things which do appear. Without faith it is impossible to please God. They who come to God must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. To the woman with the issue of blood, it was your faith that made you whole. Here it comes. Why did I give you all those faith scriptures? Because I understand the thesis. Your faith will only work for you. May I submit to you? May I submit to you? Your faith will only work according to the faith that you express. So what you do with your faith, it will determine what your faith will do for you. May I submit to you, Pops? The disciples said, God, show us the faith. Show us how to get more faith. Jesus literally said, faith in God is contingent upon how much faith you got in the word. I can have faith in the world. I can have faith in me. But the faith that will not fail is the faith in God. This is the reason why I tell y'all that the one two punch of the gospel coming into the kingdom is me knowing who I am with identity and knowing the faith that God has given me to move a mountain. Because the Bible said, Pops, that God has dealt to every man the man. In other words, Christy, you want something from people, and you get it by giving them money. But when you want something from God, you get it by giving them faith. Because faith is the currency of the kingdom. Why do you say that, Pastor Jane? Because faith has a flow. Do you realize that faith is a currency? You know why they call money currency? Because it's a... Can I show y'all faith where it has a flow and how it's the currency of the kingdom? In other words, when I come to God, I don't need money. When I come to God, I need faith. I don't just need faith. I need the God kind of faith. Because I can get the wrong type of faith in myself. And God ain't calling me to have faith in me. He's calling me to have faith in God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was void and without form, and darkness covered the face of the deep, and the spirit of the Lord. I looked up the word hoover, and it means to move. I looked up the moving, and it means a flow. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was void and without form. Darkness covered the face of the deep. And the spirit of the Lord started flowing. He started hoovering. Because why? Jesus said, words are spirit. So the spirit was hoovering, waiting on an instruction. Nothing happened until God said something. I don't know who this is for. Nothing happened until God said something. God was hovering, looking for somebody to land on. There is a word over you, Valerie, that is hovering, waiting on you to accept the substance. I can't get caught up. I can't get caught up. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Faith is substance, but belief is acceptance of the substance. So in other words, the spirit hoovering is just substance. 
And it's waiting on acceptance. In acceptance, my heart believes and accepts unto righteousness. This is what you didn't know. That is every prophetic word that was coming to each and every person. This was a word that was releasing a, a flow. So therefore, until the heart believes, opens up his heart, and to accept the flow, substance has to meet acceptance for the revelation and the manifestation of truth and faith. God, it's flowing. God said, let there be light. Light, light. All of a sudden, light came. Why? Because faith is currency. God says, I'm going to exchange faith in order to get light. I'm going to exchange faith in order to get man. Genesis 126. And God says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air. He said something before he got something. God will say something to you before he does something for you. I, I got to go. I got to go. Time. God has to say something to you before he does something for you. Why? Because faith is a currency that's looking to flow and it's looking for your heart to accept and agree with the substance. The Bible says, can I give y'all three principles of faith and get up on about it? Can I give y'all a story and three principles of faith and I'm gone? I ain't even gone. I ain't not. Put them all up at one time, every one of them right now. Watch this, watch this. Number one, before God does something with you, he has to say something to you. This is a principle of faith. Before God does something with you, he got to say something to you. The second one is this. Faith does not eliminate distractions. But faith does keep you focused. We think that we need faith to eliminate distractions. Mama Land, we need faith to keep us focused. I'm going somewhere, y'all. I'm going somewhere. Well, watch this. Faith, here it comes. An absolute a demonstration of your absolute trust in who God is, what God says, and what God does. Who he is, he's a rewarder. What he does will never let us be put to shame. What, what, I mean, what, he's, what, what he says, he said, I will never allow you to be put to shame. And what God does, he always causes me to try and remember this remember he's not a respecter of persons but he is a respecter of principles here he comes the bible says that Israel was impoverished and every time they would begin to get food the Midianites the Amalekites and everybody would take the food from them, rob them, and leave them impoverished. And the Bible said that God saw a young man by the name of Gideon that was sitting under a tree. And Gideon was trying all he could to just be a provider for his family. Every time he sold a seed to get a harvest, they would come and take it. And one day God came to him and God said, Gideon, you mighty man of battle. I have called you to be the one to deliver the Israelites out of the hand of the Midianites. And you know what Gideon said? Gideon said, Lord, ain't no way in the world you can call me. I am the least of the least in my father's house. Point number one, before God does something with you, he says something to you. May I submit to you, I don't know where you are in your life, but God, you may be calling yourself a sinner, but God may be saying you are a mighty man of valor. You may be calling yourself beneath, but God may be saying you are above. You may be calling yourself a reject, but God may be saying you are accepted. Gideon, begin to cry. 
Because he says, look at my family and look at my family line. Transform your faith. Transform your faith. What does this remind you of? God trying to call, in the New Testament, God trying to call a man a son, but the son calling himself an orphan. So you mean to tell me I'm trying to do something with you and I say something to you? And guess what? You reject who I call you? I don't know who I'm talking to. But you cannot be the first one to overthrow poverty in your family if you don't accept who God is calling you. You cannot be the first one to bring the family together if you don't accept what God is calling you. You cannot be the first one to turn everything around if you just don't accept what God is calling you. He says, you mighty man of God. I'm anointing you today to go destroy the enemy, the Midianites, as if they are one man. You're going to whoop them like it's only going to be one of them. And may I submit to you, let me go on to the end of the story. May I submit to you, it was 132,000 of them that was getting ready to go against Gideon, but God called him a mighty man of battle. This means I don't care who's against you. Long as I got God that is for me. Long as I got God that is on me. Long as I got the hand of God that is flowing in my life. Almighty oh, man of valor. He didn't say it can't be me because I'm the least of the least in my father's house. He says, well, I will anoint you. He says, well, where's all the victories? Where's all the wins? I heard my mom and my dad and them talking about it. You did that for them. But what you going to do for me? I'm trying to call you who you are, who you are. And you still flirting with who you used to be. You still talking about what happened in the past. And I'm trying to change the trajectory of your life. Here it comes. I can't change you if your faith don't change you. I got to say something to you so I can put faith in you. And then faith is going to. So Gideon is frustrated. And the Lord says, I'm sending you to go. And he says, okay, I'm going to go. He said, how am I going to do this? He said, well, God, here it comes. He ain't say this, but this is what he's saying. I really don't trust you. I don't trust you, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go make you some food, and I'm going to come back. And if this you, you're going to eat the food. How many times have God come to us and told us he has something for us? But in our mind and in our hearts, we literally say, I don't trust you. Here it comes. The Lord told me to tell you this. You can test me as long as I can test you. The Holy Spirit told me to tell you. He said, don't listen to what your mom and them said. Don't be questioning God. Don't be doing that. He says this. If you can test me, you can test me as long as I can test you. And so Gideon said, okay. He went and brought, he went and got the food. He brought it back and the angel of the Lord licked it up right there. And he said, wow, man, I'm about to die. I've seen God face to face. How many people pray to God and don't even believe God will show up when he shows up? Why is that? Weak faith will miss the manifestation when God comes to your place. Weak faith. You pray to God to get you out, then God come get you out, and you be like, that couldn't have been God. I just don't believe it's God. Yeah, 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 it was him. He says this, if you, hey, let me, you can test me if you just allow me to test you. So the Bible says, he tested Gideon, and Gideon say, oh my God, this God, I can't get around it. Remember now, Numbers 23 says this also. Never make a vow that you are not willing to keep. The Bible says that one of the worst things a man or a woman can do is to make a vow and not keep the vow that he made to God. You can make a vow to people and don't keep it. But whatever you do, don't you dare make a vow to God and don't keep the vow. Here it comes. So now, you didn't say, man, it's God. He said, I'm a mighty man of Allah. It's game time. You know what the first thing God told Gillian to do? He said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go to your daddy's altars because they've been serving other gods. You're going to serve me. But your father and them is serving other gods. This is what I want you to do. Pull down their idols. 
pull down the idols. In other words, I want you to pull down what they say they believe in. In, in other words, literally, when I'm doing something with you, sometimes I will cause you to go against the ones who are closest to you. He tells Gideon to you, pull down your daddy's idols. Because the Bible says, don't serve another God except for me. His daddy and his mother had made idols right there. And watch this. Not was just the family serving them. Breathe. The entire city was serving them. What is an idol? It's anything that we put above God. And watch this. In social media, sex is the idol. And I mean, pornography is the idol. So, so, in then social media. So, this is the God. And so, it's kind of like, you be in the midst of everything, then you get called out by God. He say, hey, pull that idol down. Yeah. Go to that pornography and put it down. Yeah. May I submit to you, you're going to be hated. Yeah. You're going to be ostracized. Yeah. You're going to be rejected. But watch this. I told you, pull it down. Yeah. I will know just how much faith you got in me if you believe and if you obey. Yeah. How many people, when God tells you to get out of this, but you've been with your folks for so long, and God said, get out of it, pull this out. How many people say, God, you ain't, I can't believe you making me do this. Yeah. What is the Lord trying to do? He's trying to show you who you have your faith in. Yeah. I'm gone. Yeah. Pull the idols down. Gideon said, well, I'll pull them down, but I had to pull them down at 12 o'clock at night because I don't need nobody to see me. Yeah. Pull them down. Pull them down. God, you ain't tell me what time to pull them down. <laughs> you just told me to pull them down. That makes any sense. So, 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 therefore, so he had to sneak. Pull the idols down. The entire city was in a rage. But because he took a stance for God, may I submit to you, the entire city turned. <laughs> this is the point. God is waiting on you to take a stand. You asking God to answer prayers over here, but God is asking you to take a stand over here. If you take a stand over here, what you want over here is going to be eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. The thing that has entered into the hearts of man. May I submit to you, your act of obedience is waiting to release a generational people. He says, I did it. And he turned around. And he said, okay, God, I'm good. He said, now here we go. You got one victory. Now I'm ready to set you up for a lifetime. Of victory. What usually happens when I get one victory of faith is sets me up. To have a lifestyle of victories of faith. The devil fights us all we can for you not to get one victory. Because if I get one victory, it's going to get contagious and I'm going to get two victories. It's going to get contagious and I'm going to get four victories. I'm going to get contagious and going to get eight victories. It's going to get 16 victories. It's going to get 32. Because God works in compound interest. God just don't give you one victory. He gives two, and then it goes to four. Then it goes to eight. Then it goes 16, 32, 64, 128, 215. Watch this. Watch this. But a faith that has not been tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. Gideon, it's game time. You won in your city. Now let's go take the nation. You won where you from, but let's go to Washington, D.C. Because now it's game time. Get you say, God, if I do this, you got to show me you really with me. Ho, ho, didn't I just win? But this can't compare it to this. If you with me, I'm going to put this fleece out here. And it's going, to be, it's going to be dry. When I wake up in the morning, it better be wet. Okay, let's do this. Boom. He rings it. Man, it's wet. My God. He say, now, I want to go. 
but I want to leave it out here wet. And when I come back, it better be dry. God said, remember now, you can test me. Just let me test you. Korean, you can, you can test me. God said, you can test me, but just let me test you. The fleece comes back. Gideon say, oh my God. God is really with me. And the Bible says, and the Bible says that Gideon, I'm, I'm about done, y'all. Y'all get ready. I'm about done. Gideon goes to God and he tells him, you're about to fight 132,000 people. You got 30,000 with you. Guess what? That's too many. Hold on. It don't make sense. 132 verse 30? This means that I only got a fourth and a half of what they have. And you say, I got too many? He said, yeah, you got too many. Because you don't need no cowards in your army. Let me show you the test of the coward. Out of 30,000 people, just tell them this. If you want to go home, if you want to quit, just go ahead right now. We're not going to ostracize you. We're not going to reject you. We're not going to downplay you. All we're saying is, leave right now. And the Bible says that out of 30,000, 22,000 people turned around. Why? Because faith and fear cannot manifest together. Listen, 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 listen. This is the point. They can stand together, but they can't manifest together. I can be afraid and be in faith and stand, but if I move, I'm leaving fear behind. I can stand with fear and I can stand with faith, but when God tells me to move, it's either I'm going to take a step forward or I'm going to take a step backward. So faith is demonstrated and fear is demonstrated when you act on an instruction. You got 22,000 people that has walked away and the Lord said, how many you got now? He says, 10,000. You still got too many. I said, how in the world do you got too many people? These folks got 132,000. I only have 10,000. How in the world is that too little? He said, this is what I want you to do. I want to see who don't just have regular faith. I'm looking for some people who got focused faith. Because if I'm going to do something that I've never done, I got to have a focus that I've never had. If I'm going to go somewhere that I've never been, I got to have a focus that I've never had. And the Bible said, then he said this, just take them to the water, Rossi. Take everybody to the water. They're thirsty. The entire crew, everybody's thirsty because they've been getting ready and getting prepared for war and they're thirsty. So in other words, he's literally saying that the water is the distraction. Take them to the water. You're going to see how you're going to pick out the ones. He says, they are all going to get out on the ground. And some of them are going to be so distracted that they're going to lap like a dog. They're going to lap like a dog. They're going to lap like a dog. But then you're going to have some who are going to remain focused. Give me my principles, Jimmy. You're going to have some that's going to be focused. And they're going to keep their hands up. And they're going to be looking for the enemy. And they're going to be bringing the water to their faith. Because I don't just need any kind of faith. I need some focused faith. I need some undistracted faith. I need some faith that's going to keep his eyes directly on the enemy. This is our problem, Francesca. We think that having faith eliminates the distractions. But faith does not eliminate distractions. Faith 
keeps focused. Even though I need the water, and the water could be a distraction. My God, my God, my God. Do y'all catch that? Right? The three, hey, hey, the other ones, they were just so distracted into getting the water, the enemy, as they got their heads down, can come in and destroy them. But when faith is focused, faith looks at the enemy. Faith needs water. Faith keeps focusing. Because you know what? I just don't know when the enemy is coming. And if I got a little bit of water and I got a little bit of God, I can defeat the enemy when the enemy comes to me. But I can't defeat the enemy when I can't see the enemy. I can't defeat the enemy when I'm not paying attention to the enemy. I got to build a business, so I got to stay focused. I got to build a marriage, so I got to stay focused. I got to build a family, so I got to stay focused. I got to build a church. Bible said, Natisha, out of 10,000, only 300 were focused. It makes all the sense in the world. When God told Joshua and Caleb, go over the land, spy it out, come back and give the report, the Bible said out of 12, Ten of them gave an evil report. Two of them said, we can do This is what I'm trying to let you understand. Hear me. When you are a game changer in your field, Keisha, you're not going to be the maximum. You're going to be the least. It ain't a whole lot of people that's going to stand against the enemy. It ain't a whole lot of people that's going to stand on truth. It ain't a whole lot of people that's going to do it how God says do it. It's only going to be a few who are willing to lay their lives down. He got 300 people going into 132,000. If God is not with you, that will be the death of you. If God is not with you, you will be put to shame and you will be in. If God is not with you. And the Bible said that Gideon grabbed his 300 people. And if you read the text, he was walking, but he wasn't certain. Because he had 300 against 132,000. And all he had, Miss Judia J, was a word from God. He didn't have no guns. He had a word from God. He didn't have no, he didn't have no tools. He's nervous and he's scared. And God says, check this out. This is all I want you to do. I want you to see your victory before the victory even happens. This is what I want you to do. I need you to go down to the camp. Because they're going to be talking about you. You're about to hear what they're about to say about you. Because this is the point. When God is for you, and, and the enemy know that God is on you, they're going to talk about you when you don't even know who you are. They're going to talk about you when you don't even know whose hand is on you. They're going to talk about you when you don't even believe in you. And the Bible said that Gideon went down and he peeped around the camp where 132,000 is there. And the people started saying, I had a dream last night, and I dreamed that a bread, just a big old basket of bread, came tumbling down into our camp, and it destroyed every last one of us. And the man began to interpret. He said, man, y'all know something? You know what the interpretation is? God is on Gideon, and Gideon is the representation of the bread coming down into our camp. They had 132,000. Gideon didn't have but 300. 
But Gideon had somebody that they didn't have. Gideon had the Holy Spirit, a vision that opened up their eyes to see that the bread began tumbling. Watch this. Here it comes. And a spirit of fear hit the camp. Pay attention to this now. Fear is from the enemy. But a spirit of fear when it hit the enemy. I need y'all to catch this. Catch this. Unhealthy fear is not from God. Unhealthy fear is from the enemy. The enemy gets fearful and a spirit of fear hits them. And in other words, when God shows himself to the enemy, the enemy gets destroyed by the same thing that he uses to destroy you. Oh, God. Did you catch that revelation? Faith will make the spirit of fear turn on its own enemy. So if I stand in faith, the thing that the enemy has been using to kill me, it gets boomeranged and it kills him because God is for me. Because God is with me. Because God is on me. And the Bible said, I'm done. The Bible said that when the fight broke out, that the 300 men didn't even have to fight against the enemy. Because a spirit of fear was so strong that the enemy started fighting against him. Can I tell you the power of faith? When I walk in the power of faith, what used to come against me will start killing itself. Because not a word will go out of my mouth and return back to me void. When I start walking in faith, when I start walking in faith, may I submit to you, the rebellion I used to walk in, yeah. the rebellion started killing itself. Yeah. The people who didn't believe in me, yeah. they started rebelling against each other. My God. Because why? I took a bold stance in faith. My God. Yeah. May I submit to you that when you was in pride and you get out of pride and you walk in humility and stand in faith, pride will begin to fight against itself. will reward everything he will reward every single thing he's a he's a rewarder points he's a rewarder of those who dimly who diligently seek him because this is what I did a demonstration of your absolute trust in who God is what God says and what God in other words when I walk in God's faith I attract God's power ladies and gentlemen if you don't get nothing that will change your life this principle of faith it will baptize every dimension of your life he is a reward of those who diligently, that word diligently, diligently means a painstaking effort. Gideon put in a painstaking effort in order to see the reward from heaven. I cannot say that I'm walking by faith if I don't get tested by pain. Spirit of the living God, we honor you. We celebrate you. We appreciate you and we thank you for everything you're doing. We thank you for everything you've done. We thank you for everything that you're about to do. Father, show us intimately that you are not a respecter of persons, but you are a respecter of principles. Thank you for the principle of faith 
that I can use for my life on today and change every dimension of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, come. In Jesus' name. Everybody give God a hand clap of praise. There may be somebody here today that you've used your faith to get everything that you ever wanted, but you hadn't used your faith to become a son or a daughter of God. And you know that the Lord is asking you a question. Will you have faith in me? Not have faith in me, have faith in, in him. This is the Lord asking you. And you know without a shadow of a doubt, you need to give your life to Jesus and you need to be baptized. You need to put your faith in the Son of God from not just being Savior, but to being Lord. Yeah. If that's you, we just want to celebrate you. We're not going to embarrass you. We just want you to raise your hand. We want you to raise your hand. We know without a shadow of a doubt that there is somebody in this house on today that the Holy Spirit of God, the Father, has his arms open and saying, come on, come on. Come on, you know without a shadow of a doubt that you've been using your faith in the wrong way, but you want to be loved by God. You want to be forgiven by God. You want to become a new creation in God, and you want to be the righteousness of God. If that's you, we just want to celebrate you. We want to celebrate you. Just, just, just raise your hand right where you are. Just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It, there is one person. There, there it goes. There's two people. There, there it goes. Come on, come on. There are three people. Come on. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Keep your hands up. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Hallelujah. Three people. We got three people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, transform me, babe. Come on, transform me, babe. One, two, three, four. We got four, we got four people, y'all. Look at what the Lord is doing. While the enemy is trying to bring confusion, look at what the Lord is doing. Hallelujah. There's five people. Come on, y'all. Come on. Look at what the Lord is doing. It is marvelous in his eyes. May I submit to you six. We got six people. We got six people. Six people. Come on, transform me, babe. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. You know, you know, you need God to change you. You cannot change you, but you know you need God to change you. Six, or do we got seven? Can we make it complete? Can we make it complete? Will one more person make it complete? Will they make it complete? Six, we got six for salvation. Will we make it seven? Will we make it seven? Will there be one? Hallelujah, another one, there it goes right there. We got seven people that accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior transforming faith. This is what we do it for. Hallelujah to the seven people. Listen, listen, listen. You heard what the Bible said when we started. You confess out of your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus died, raised from the grave. Watch this. And the God of the universe comes to live on the inside of you. We hadn't made salvation as big as it's supposed to be. We made salvation about going to heaven. But many people are not talking about heaven coming into us. A part of the benefit package is this. You just don't go to heaven. Heaven comes into you. How does heaven come into me, Pastor James? By way of the Holy Spirit. For the kingdom of God is not in meat or drink, but in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So the kingdom of God is in the Holy Spirit. The disciple says, Lord, show us the kingdom is going to satisfy us. He says the kingdom of God is not on the outside of you. The kingdom of God is on the inside of you. How is the kingdom on the inside of me? Through the Holy Spirit. When I accept Jesus, the spirit of God comes into my spirit, not my soul or my body, into my spirit. He regenerates me and I get in the family of God. Watch this. I'm no longer a sinner. Come on, yeah. I'm a son or a daughter of God because the God of the universe lives on the inside of me. May I submit to you in nothing is impossible at that point. To the seven people that raise your hand, raise it again and open up your mouth and repeat this behind me. Everybody say this. Say, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. For giving me my life back. And thank you. And thank you. For coming into my heart. For making me a new creation. Forgive me for every sin, every iniquity, every trespass, and every transgression. And right now, I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and my personal Savior. Holy Spirit, you're welcome 
to come into my heart, make me a new creation, and adopt me into the family of God. In Jesus' name, everybody give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. 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 There may be some people here today, and you may be saying, my faith is faulted. I let, uh, God tested me, but I didn't make good on the test. And what you want to do is just repent. That's, 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 that's it. That's it. And you just want to realign yourself. If that's you, just let me release a Father's blessing over your life. If that's you, just raise your hand. I, I, see, them, I see all the hands up right now. Holy Spirit of God, come. Your word says that we, having the same spirit of faith, therefore we believe, therefore we speak. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you said you would heal us from backsliding in Jeremiah 3. So in Jesus' name, we exchange our faith from one world to the next. And we say that my faith is in you. My faith is in you being a father. My faith is in you being a protector. My faith is being in you being my provider. Holy Spirit of God, I release a father's blessing of peace, love, comfort, and joy, strength over every single person whose hands up. Father, bless their transparency with a double portion of breakthrough. In Jesus' name, let the spirit of faith fall. In Jesus' name, everybody give God a hand clap of praise right here.